standard agriculture today, it's typically annual vegetables. Annual vegetables are very short-rooted, um, you know, constantly sucking those nutrients out of the soil, where perennial vegetables, when I say perennial, that's something that lives two or more years, you know, those, so those roots go much deeper down into the soil profile, reaching those minerals and nutrients. They also last for, you know, for years on years, that you don't have to constantly replant them like you would an annual. So yeah, they're much more nutrient dense, much easier to grow. Number one pointer if I can give you guys is mulch. Yeah. Um, tree mulch, you know, whatever that mulch may be that's native to your area. So like right here in Florida, that central region, that pioneer species had been oak mulch. So oak mulch will contain the bacteria, the fungi, you know, that's already present in our soil to break it down. So when we put that stuff down on the ground, we're retaining moisture, we're feeding the worms, we're feeding the microbes, you know, we're creating that mycelium we had talked about. And it's typically a free product. Yeah. So it's kind of like a no brainer. Like yeah. you've contacted tree services. Oh, dude, you know, that was the biggest thing that I learned changer, you know? when I first first started to grow I was having the hardest time just to keep everything alive because I was having to buy soil from Home Depot and then mix with my sandy soil it could I had to work really hard to keep the plants alive and then when I started learning about permaculture I learned to just deep deep mulch now all of a sudden my backyard went from completely sandy soil to now I have really like black gold nice nutritious soil that I actually have a whole video of on my channel of Building how soil. I yeah 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 of how I went from sand to soil in less than a year and, and we've had seven frosts already this year so by planting into the existing oak canopy that I have here we're utilizing that microclimate and by microclimate I mean when it's 32 degrees over there in the front of the farm under this area it might be 35 it might be 38 degrees you know there's there could be a six to eight degree difference here in the canopy and those trees are kind of creating that blanket to bring up the warmth level in here so you know we've got dead plants over there that are completely exposed areas and we're looking at bananas right now that are completely untouched you know because they're in that canopy area being protected by that microclimate that's awesome, and that's something that you don't really get in the monoculture, huh? Not at all, you no. know, in those row crops, you know, where we're taking advantage of, you know, not just that, these oaks are constantly mulching the system. You know, they're constantly dropping their leaves every year. They're constantly putting that organic matter down on the ground. That's helping to retain moisture. That's helping to build mycelium. Um, you know, we're, we have a, a living soil out here, a living Absolutely. network, you know, where plants are communicating with each other. The mycelium to me is the internet of the soil. It's the allowance of those plants to communicate. It can actually take humidity from the air and transpire it as, you know, moisture into the soil on dry days. You know, this is how forests can just take in mo you know, moisture naturally without that's having that rain. So I that's mean, awesome. Kind of have to have that, you know. Yep, and that's also how the forest and even you with your edible landscape can grow all these foods and not you don't need chemicals you don't need to add in all this extra stuff because you have just the mycelium to almost work for you in a lot of ways right? living life soils yeah so something i'll point out you know right here we're on you know just over six acres i've got uh, you know thousands and thousands of plants and trees in the ground and you know we have no irrigation on the entire farm Wow. Um, you know, everything out here was a little bit watered. Maybe it was put in or was watered at the right, you know, installed at the right time of year while we're in rainy season. So yeah. they develop, you know, with those rains. Um, you know, all these plants are kind of thriving on neglect. I'm not really into babying things or giving them a lot yeah. of love and attention. You know, I want to be able to plant something. You know, give it a little bit of love, but kind of forget it and come back out and it's constantly paying me back. A ground cover that's protecting the soil. That's really the key into our systems. You know, if, if we don't plant the plants we want, we're going to get the plants we don't want. You know, so by planting densely, planting a lot of plants, whether it be, you know, cover crops of beans, perennial peanut, sunshine mimosa, sweet potato, whatever it may be, you know, if we don't have skin on our arms, what's gonna happen? We're gonna get an infection. We're gonna get, you know, something that comes in. So we have to look at these ground covers. It's kind of like the skin on our arm. We wanna protect that. This way we're gonna keep that organic matter there for the longest period of time. So, you know, having bare soil, what's gonna happen? We're gonna get weeds, right? You know, so I kind of like to look at the plants as the weeds, you know, we plant the weeds we want or we're gonna get the weeds we don't want. You know, I've chosen edible, medicinal, you know, useful weeds, you know, things yeah, that make sense, you sure. know? So, you know, by getting all those different species in here, it's not like we're attacking just one. Like if I had a big field of peaches, you know, yeah, I'm probably asking for potentially having some type of problems, but by having peaches and plums and pears and mulberries and figs and olives and avocados and all these different scents and smells out here, you know, that predator comes in and he's thrown off. 
You know, he's instantly, maybe he's gonna go to that next field or that, that citrus grove down the road. He's gonna leave me alone, you know? There's a lot going on here. He doesn't want anything to do with my predators. You know, I wanna see more doers, you know? Get out there, experiment, you know? Yeah. I, all of my, I don't read a lot of books. I'll tell you guys right now, um, I learn the most from mistakes, and that's all happening through trial and error out here. Yep. Um, you know, just from experimenting, you know, don't be scared of failure. You know, I always tell people, fail better. Yep. You know, fail better. Um, you're going you're gonna to get better at this as you go, you know, so just don't be scared to get out there and stick something in the dirt, to try, to learn. Um, it's exciting, you know, it kind of... Uh, It'll get you going at night. You know, we grow our fertilizer. So not only do we have nitrogen fixing ground covers, nitrogen fixing trees, which means that those ground covers and those trees can take the air we breathe and th through a symbiotic relationship and soil borne bacteria actually turn that into fertilizer in the ground, you know? Huh. So we have, you know, nitrogen fixing mimosa, nitrogen fixing uh, peanut, you know, caliandra trees, ice cream bean trees. But what's even better than that, and what's really easy to grow that I wanted to show y'all was the Mexican sunflower. It grows like a weed here. It makes a perennial sunflower. It actually kind of gets a, maybe a bad rap because it can get really tall, touch down and reroot. And some people would say it's invasive, but the way we manage it in our systems, we chop and drop. And by chop and drop, I'll show you over here. We grow a lot of clumping grasses. So you can grow lemongrass, you can grow vetiver grass, you can grow mealy grass. One of the ones we like the most is probably Fakahatchee grass. This is a native grass here in Florida. And as you can see, we just recently cut that grass back. You know, this is a, a carbon source of material. This is high in silica. So we have this high nitrogen, high, high carbon, high silica. You know, we're getting that carbon nitrogen ratio. So when I come out here and I prune, you know, this can grow four to five foot a month. You know, pound for pound equal the chicken manure while wet. You know, so this is like pure nitrogen. It's also said to be a dynamic accumulator. And by dam dynamic accumulator, I mean its roots are going super low into the soil profile and build, building, bringing up nutrients that other plants can't reach or access, bringing it up into the plant. So when I cut that back and lay that down, I'm taking those nutrients that are way down there in the soil. I'm taking that high nitrogen and I'm just laying it around the tree. So whatever that tree may be, you know, whether it be an olive tree, whether it be a loquat tree, We'll pile all of this organic matter, biomass, around the tree. This is a grass, not exactly a good example. And we lay that grass on top of it. And what that grass is doing for us, because it is that high carbon, that high silica, it's kind of shielding that really sensitive green material from the sun, and it's making it a slower breakdown process. So what I'm trying to mimic here and create is a slow release fertilizer with plants that we grow. Just like the forest does, and that's what helps you to be able to grow so much abundance without having to add in all the fertilizers, right? Exactly. It Ma does it the natural way, just the same way the forest does it. You know, nature has this all figured out. All we have to do is watch and listen. <laughs> all right, guys, so if you do plan on planting any trees or starting your own garden or really doing anything outside, think about checking out the app My Radar. It's a completely free app that gives you the instant radar of wherever you at or wherever you want to go, and all you got to do is just click on it and it just lets you know if there's any rain, sleet, snow are coming. So you can know if uh, you got to water your plants or you're going to get caught in the rain or not.